a high stakes meeting between President Biden and the King of Jordan happening at the White House today as the world leaders work to try to broker an end to the bloodshed in Gaza. This meeting coming as Israel expands its offensive in southern Gaza. The Israel Defense Force is saying that it rescued two hostages today who were being held in the city of Rafah. The IDF says that this video shows the two men being reunited with their families. Airstrikes during the operation left 67 Palestinians dead, including women and children. That's according to the Gaza Health Ministry. With Israel threatening a ground invasion of Rafah, the death toll is expected to rise. More than 1.4 million Palestinians were told to go south to Rafah earlier in the war because it was deemed safe. Not only do we pray for peace, we're actively working for peace, security and dignity for both the Palestinian people and the Israeli people. Joining us now to talk about what is happening in Gaza, retired four-star Army General Barry McCaffrey, also an NBC and King 5 News and military analyst. Uh, General, thanks for being with us. Good to be with you, Joyce. I first want you to explain for us this assault on Rafah, where more than a million Palestinians were told to seek shelter, attacks that uh, came after the two hostages were rescued overnight. Explain it for us. Well, apparently the uh, in Israeli intelligence service located these two hostages several weeks ago. They've been watching it, uh, kept under the surveillance. Uh, they rehearsed the operation. They went in at, uh, you know, early in the, in the middle of the night. Uh, they killed the guards on the hostages, got them out in the process. They also attacked from the air or with artillery all the um, the Hamas uh, headquarters and units in the vicinity. Then they came out under intense fire uh, with Israeli tank units escorting them. So it was a bloody mess. Uh, it worked. Uh, the actual attack on Rafa writ large has not yet begun, uh, but it promises also to be a further tragedy in which great damage to not just infrastructure, but loss of life will occur. The Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu has promised that uh, Rafa would be a safe area, that there would be safe passage for Palestinians. Yet these airstrikes are happening in Rafa. Palestinians don't have anywhere to go. 28,000 have already been killed, 67,000 injured. What are Palestinians in the South supposed to do? Well, right now, it uh, it appears that what Netanyahu is probably up to is he's putting extreme pressure on Hamas's remaining leadership, which is largely in the south, in tunnels, uh, several hundred miles of these uh, underground tunnels. Uh, he thinks he'll get the hostages released if he forces Hamas to the table. My gut instinct is we've probably got less than a month of fighting remaining. Uh, but again, it's going to be a, a, a bloody mess. Uh, trying to conduct operations against 30,000 Hamas operatives uh, who took part in the rape, murder, torture of hundreds of Israeli civilians on 7 October. Um, and humanitarian aspects of this has been a disaster to the Palestinian civilian population. Mm -hmm. uh, there are three other topics I really want to get to. As you know, the president met with the King of Jordan today at the White House. Will that help in negotiations for the release of the hostages when Hamas and Israel are so far apart in trying to come to any deal on a ceasefire? Well, I think so. It's going to be a carrot and a stick, and the Jordanians and the Egyptians and the Saudis and others have a vested interest in trying to get the war in Gaza ended. Uh, Hamas has asked essentially for uh, the IDF to permanently conduct a ceasefire and then to withdraw their forces from Gaza. That's not going to happen. Uh, so the question is, uh, when will Hamas agree to give up all these hostages? If they do, uh, my expectation is that Secretary Blinken will organize a regional effort to keep the peace. So we better hope that that's what, what happens, because the uh, the impact on the, on the civilian population is clearly uh, terrible. And finally, General, as you know, former President Trump yesterday suggested that Russia could attack America's NATO allies, saying that you don't pay your bills, you don't get any protection. Your reaction to those comments? Well, to some extent, it's just Trump nonsense. It's a rally talk. Uh, he sounds like a, you know, a 10-year-old at times. Uh, the end result is diminished credibility 
and trust of the United States security alliance, alliances, which you have around the world, the centerpiece of which is NATO. Uh, 32 countries, once Sweden go, uh, joins, immense economic wealth, vital to U.S. national security interests. Uh, it is hard to understand what Trump thinks he's doing. He's also called into question uh, the alliance with Japan and the alliance with South Korea. The whole notion of deterrence is military and economic power combined with political will. Trump is damaging. There's a bow wave of disbelief among our allies on, on what might be coming. General Barry McCaffrey, we'll be talking much more about this and many other issues, including aid to Ukraine and also to Israel in the days and weeks ahead. Thank you so much. We're always so grateful for your analysis. We appreciate it. Be with you, Joyce.